Curl and divergence in 2D are going to help us make sense of a lot of things, especially Green's theorem. Let's go back and revisit Green's theorem from the perspective of curl and divergence. So let's think about how this goes. If you have a planar vector field, something of the form fxi plus fyj, then for a domain in the plane with an oriented boundary, the circulation version says that if you integrate fx dx plus fy dy along the boundary of d, that is if you compute the circulation along that boundary curve, then that's the double integral over the interior of partial fy partial x minus partial fx partial y. We now recognize that right-hand integrand as the curl density in 2D, as curl of F integrated with respect to area. Now that's the circulation interpretation. If we compute the integral of the flux one form, that is minus Fy dx plus Fx dy, if we integrate that along the boundary of D to get the net flux, this is really the same thing as the double integral over the interior of partial fx, partial x, plus partial fy, partial y. And that right-hand integrand we now recognize as the divergence density. So we have these, these two sort of dual interpretations of Green's theorem in terms of curl and divergence. And these are very visual, very physical. If you have a vector field along the boundary of your domain and you want to compute the net circulation, then what you can do is think of the interior of the domain as being populated by these infinitesimal spinners, by things that are spinning either in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. This is what the curl density is telling you. In regions where you have a counterclockwise motion, that is a positive curl density. And that contributes positively to the net circulation along the boundary. Whereas clockwise spin, negative curl density is contributing to negative circulation along the boundary. That is the interpretation of Green's theorem with respect to curl. If we change perspectives and think about what the interpretation of Green's theorem is with respect to divergence now, when considering the net flux across the boundary of your domain, you're examining the infinitesimal behavior in the interior of the domain from the perspective of divergence. That is, is the vector field locally expanding the area? that is positive divergence, or is it locally contracting that area that is negative divergence? Am I, am I being pushed out or am I being sucked in? And what is happening over the interior affects the net amount of flux across the boundary. That is what Green's theorem means in the case of divergence. So now we have these two beautiful interpretations of Green's theorem.